We're spring cleaning here at the Walters household, and after making my husband Jeremy touch up the paint in the kitchen, I got a brilliant idea. So prepare to have your minds blown, because I'm gonna use this painter's tape to make an adorably bright spring stardust quilt. So let's get started. This pattern was designed by Cora Quilts, and it uses the spring-like colors of Boundless Fabrics, and it's gonna make a big, beautiful star block. And I got a little bit of a confession to make. I didn't come up with the idea of using painter's tape as a quilting hack, but it's so versatile, I can't wait to show you some of the unconventional ways I like to use it. So, let's get these cut up, and we'll get to making the quilt. So I'm gonna take this beautiful fabric and cut it into strips and then subcut the strips into squares. Now I know this quilt is supposed to have diamonds, but we'll see those in a second when we do the stitch and flip method. Besides using the tape as a nice little placeholder for your wine, I mean piecing potion, you can use it to label your blocks. Sure, washi tape has come around, it's beautiful, but it's kind of the new kid on the block. I like the good old painter's tape. I'm just gonna rip off pieces, label all my sections so I can start making the first part of my star block. So these are the A pieces and the B pieces. And I'm gonna keep cutting and labeling them until all the pieces are ready. Besides using painter's tape for practical things, it also adds a decorative touch to certain items like your machine. Painter's tape mosaic. I could just see it being a new class. I have all the pieces labeled and ready to go to make the first portion of my block. And I'm gonna start by grabbing some of these squares and cutting them in half to make a half square triangle. So now I'm gonna piece these together to make my half square triangle, press the seams, and then I'll get to the stitch and flip to make the rest of my block. No problem, half square triangles, we've seen those a couple of times. Well now we're gonna make the next part of our first block by doing a little stitching and flipping. So I have one rectangle piece, I have my square, and I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner and stitch on that line. I'm gonna place it right sides together with my rectangle so that the drawn line aims toward the center of the long side. That's important, because if I turn it around, it's not gonna make diamonds, it's gonna make something different. There's actually an ingenious method for using the painter's tape to skip drawing the line on your block. And it just so happens I have a bonus video where I show you how to do that. And you can find the information about that in the description box below. Now that it's sewn, I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away and press it open and do the same on the other side, but with a different color. But I'm gonna make sure that drawn line is going the same angle as my previous seam, because when I'm done, I'm gonna get the first of many, many diamonds. And there we have the first section and we see that beautiful light teal diamond. I've made the other portions of the block using the same stitch and flip method. The only difference is I added a few more pieces to make the longer sections. Now that I have it all laid out, this is where we start to see those diamonds really come together. And I'm gonna start assembling it by sewing these two together and then adding the pieces and rings until the whole block is finished. Another great use for duct tape is a landing pad for my wine. That way I know exactly how far it needs to be away from the rest of the quilt to be safe. Now I have the first four blocks of my quilt finished and this is actually forming the center of the quilt and you can see the star and all the dust coming out. Well, I'm gonna sew these together and then we'll see the sides of it, come on. So that's the center of the quilt. I've already pieced together the side pieces which use the exact same technique. It might look like a solid gray strip in here, but that's not the case. It's actually pieced in rows like this using that same stitch and flip method. So we're gonna line them up here and here. Looking bright, looking beautiful. I'm gonna sew this together and then we'll finally see the middle part of the star come together. So you can see how beautiful that's looking. The points of our star are starting to come together. So I'm gonna sew that together and then add the bottom and we'll see the middle part of our quilt. The center's looking great, but this star is actually gonna be a little offset. That means my next rows are gonna be on the top and the left side. This big, beautiful offset stardust quilt is finished. I love how the strips of background come together to make these areas look like they're floating with those beautiful points. 
So all I have to do now is grab my painter's tape and get ready to get quilting. Painter's tape has so many uses when it comes to quilting, especially machine quilting, I can't wait to show you how I like to use it. I mean, in addition to leaving nice little notes to people that may be wanting to get into my quilting supplies. So I'm gonna get my ruler and my tape. Yep, nice little notes, stay out. That means you, Chloe. Now, I like to use painter's tape to help me mark out areas on my quilt, especially on a quilt like this with lots of background negative space. Now, in these beautiful points, I think what I'm gonna do is add another row of fake blocks or ghost blocks, but I'm gonna use that painter's tape to let me see just how far out I have to come. What's nice about it is I can do it while I'm quilting it. I don't have to do it all before and it comes off nice and easily, so I don't have to worry about a chalk pencil getting stuck on my quilt. So from here, I can see my beautiful blocks. I wanna add another row, and so I'm going to align my tape in that area I want it to go. But here's the thing that I like to do. I wanna make sure that it's on the inside so that when I come with a ruler, it's gonna cover that tape so I don't accidentally quilt into it. Not that it's the end of the world, it just means some creative unquilting needs to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark out the first area and then get started quilting those blocks. Using the tape as a guide, I'm gonna line the ruler over the tape and quilt a straight line that's going to echo the piecing on my block. This tape's gonna help me know exactly when I need to turn the corner to echo the other side of my block. Once I get inside the corner of my block, I'm gonna remove the tape since I don't need it anymore, and I'm gonna quilt a line that goes directly to the inner corner of that block. Now I have the spacing in which I can add more of the quilted diamonds. So once I have my space defined, I'm gonna quilt a line back to my echo line, treating it just like a diamond, and then quilting it with a dot-to-dot -dot design. Quilting a line that angles out to about a half inch inside the next point, and going on to touch the next one. I'm gonna echo on the other side, and then quilt a straight line across to the other side. And that's gonna give me a quilted block that looks like it's pieced. After quilting some of the outside blocks, I'm gonna use the seam to travel along and start quilting some of the pieced blocks. Quilting a serpentine line that goes from side to side, filling in the diamond. And because I'm easily bored, I'm gonna quilt a lot of different designs. Traveling, and then quilting a swirl. With a hook, returning back to my starting point. Again, using that traveling to get from block to block and quilting different geometric designs in those areas. I'm gonna alternate quilting the piece blocks and the fake blocks until I get to the corner of my taped area. And you can see the first part of this design where it's really trying to help fill in a lot of this background area. In fact, I think I'm gonna go around it with all the green and then maybe come back and add a pink layer. I don't know, it depends on how much time I have. Now that I've got the first side done, I'm gonna do the same thing working my way around those blocks. So again, using my tape to mark out my area, just to give me a visual, quilting my big echo space, and then filling it in with those blocks. Well, big quilt, lots of background area. I better get my painter's tape and get to it. Using painter's tape to touch up around the house or for spring cleaning is great, but not as fun as using it to quilt. I had a blast tonight using my painter's tape to mark out areas of my quilt to make sure my quilting fit it just perfectly, picking different colors of threads and different designs for the areas of my quilt. This is one bright, beautiful quilt that's always gonna remind me of spring. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget, I have that bonus video where I show you how to use painter's tape to avoid marking lines on your quilt when doing half square triangles. The link to that is below. And leave a comment telling me if you have a painter's tape hack that I might have forgotten. Well, I'll see you next time. Happy quilting.